Good evening everyone, it's David Schlothauer here with another detailed weather forecast as we are keeping an eye on more active weather that is coming, especially for the Pacific Northwest and much of the eastern half of the US in the next 7 to 10 days. Also, if you're new to the channel, if you could do me a huge awesome favor by hitting the red subscribe button, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with their family and friends on social media as it really helps out a lot, and also ring the bell notification for all notifications when I upload a YouTube video. So without further ado, let's get started and talk about that 7 to 10 day forecast here on the GFS model or known as your global forecasting system. This is by the way for February the 3rd this evening right around say 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and we can see much of the nation pretty dry. Nothing to worry about. But if you're worried about temperatures, yes, it's pretty cold across the Great Lakes, across the Northeast. In fact, some areas downright cold right now, negative 15 to negative 25 degrees below zero. Now, if you want some showers or some inclement weather, go across Oregon and Washington and portions of California where it's raining a little bit, snow in the higher elevations, but otherwise looking pretty stinking good today and this evening across much of the U.S. But yeah, the pattern always changes, doesn't it? It doesn't stay the same. If it did, then you guys would be wishing for more snow and rain eventually. So by Saturday morning, looking pretty dry, very cold across the Northeast. Wind chill warnings, even some blizzard warnings due to some uh, blowing snow, some drifting snow in the higher peaks there of like Mount Washington in uh, New Hampshire and Vermont, getting some gusty winds, but otherwise pretty stinking dry. But this continues all the way through Sunday. No inclement weather to talk about. Maybe a snow shower here and there. Maybe some Florid Floridian showers going on. Maybe some showers across the Carolinas. But looking pretty good. Thumbs up, 7 up as far as the weather goes. Now it's not thumbs up, 7 up if you are in California, Nevada, the Dakota, um, Oregon, Washington. Almost got confused there. If you are in portions of Idaho, snow showers. It's going to be thumbs down for anyone that lives there. I know you guys have had so much wild weather there recently, and it's going to continue for a while longer. Just the weather pattern is changing again, where more stormy weather is back west again. Let's go all the way to uh, Monday and Tuesday, uh, February the 6th and the 7th. Looking pretty good. Maybe some another storm system may clip the northern U.S. here, bringing some snow showers for, uh, say, portions of Wisconsin, Minnesota. If you are in Iowa, maybe a chance there for your three-day forecast. More snow. Otherwise, if you are in, say, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, if you're in Ontario, Quebec, yep, another storm system going to bring in more snow chances for your area. And another storm wants to hit the uh, Pacific Northwest again with more snow and more rainfall. This is where a lot of the active weather is going to be in the next three to five days. And then, of course, for the deep south, like Arkansas, thank goodness there is not going to be any freezing rain this go-around. I am aware that you all have had some serious, serious damage. Lots of trees down, lots of power outages due to all of the freezing rain that has occurred in this area. In fact, some areas have gotten over an inch of ice just from that winter storm that brought a lot of sleet and freezing rain from Texas into Oklahoma into um, Kentucky into Tennessee into West Virginia and Virginia. But unfortunately, I was not able to update you all on that just because we have a lot of family um, issues going on, a lot of family to take care of at this time. That's why I've been in and out here on the YouTube channel, not remaining consistent as I was hoping, but that's probably how it's going to end up being from now on. Uh, I won't be uploading as much, but I will try my best at keeping you all weather aware. Don't worry, I will. Okay, so don't worry too. I promise there's not going to be any freezing rain here with this storm system. Just a lot of rainfall. You have had too much of it if you're in the southeastern U.S., if you're in the deep south, if you're for uh, crying out loud, if you are in the eastern half there like the eastern seaboard. More showers going to go on, going to arrive. More snow chances for the Great Lakes, for the northeast. 
it's back again. More cold Arctic air potentially by next week at this time. By Saturday-ish, by Sunday, maybe more snow, more cold Arctic air is a possibility. And then more stormy weather maybe back west across California, Nevada. More high elevation snow, low elevation rain, you name it. But otherwise, the nation, the eastern half, the central portion should have some quieter weather. Fingers crossed on that. February the 12th and the 13th looks pretty good. And then I'll tell you, I'm not going really beyond 258 hours. This is probably a fantasy landstorm, but I'll show it to you anyways because it keeps you guys aware of what might be happening down the road. Actually, I should regret with what I just said about going beyond 258 hours. Okay, okay. But anyways, uh, February the 14th here. Yes, my mouse cursor is pink, and so is this. Yeah, another round of freezing rain, potentially by the 14th of February. You got snow going on across Kansas, and yes, if this system does develop, it would be really impactful. I promise you that. All right, and then that would really be a big impactful uh, storm system, even for the Northeast, if this actually did end up developing. But who cares? It's 300 hours out. You don't need to worry about it because it's probably not even going to happen. Temperatures now. What are those looking like? Well, we just talked about how cold it is across the Northeast. Temperatures 25 degrees below zero. Yes, it is mighty cold. Rare place to see that, but okay, it's the climate. If the climate allows it, it's going to happen. So definitely cold across New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. If you are in Connecticut, if you're in Massachusetts, it is downright frigid out there right now. It's going to get colder tonight before it gets better. Look at these temperatures. Yeah, maybe some negative 30, negative 35 degrees below zero. Wind chills, negative 30. 50, native 60. How about Mount Washington? Get this, just a fun fact. Mount Washington in um, Vermont could have, or yeah, New Hampshire. I get confused where Mount Washington is. Excuse me if I got it wrong. But winds could be anywhere between 75 to 100 miles an hour on top of temperatures at being negative 20 to negative 30. Your wind chill might as well be negative 70 or negative 80 degrees below zero. So if you really want to feel the cold air, go up to Mount Washington. I dare you to because it is going to be downright cold up there um, in the next, say, 25 to 60 hours as that cold, brisk northwest wind really slams the area. Nice and mild across the deep south with temperatures in the 50s and 60s during the day. Not so bad with temperatures in the 30s and 40s at night. The cold air goes back where it came from. It's going to go back into Canada. So areas like the Great Lakes and the Northeast will actually warm up. So it's not going to look too bad in a couple of days here as that uh, warmer air infection continues. We get a zonal flow. The pattern is not as extreme. But look at these temperatures in Texas and Florida in the 60s and 70s for your Sunday uh, coming up for this weekend. And then what about some 80s? Gotta get close there in northern Texas where you just got done having freezing rain. How about that? Okay, three days later, you're going to be in the 70s and 80s perhaps. So Willy Wonka weather, I guess. Say that with me, folks. Willy Wonka. Then across the northern tier of the United States and Canada, Pretty seasonable, not too cold, not too warm, just where you like it to be. 20s and 30s during the day, maybe some single digits up there in far northern uh, portion there of Canada, like Hudson Bay, and that's where the cold air stays. And again, over the next five days, we don't see a lot of that cold air coming back southward, which is good after all the cold air that you all are going to be dealing with in the next 24 to 36 hours. Now, why is the pattern going to be changing, you might ask? Well, let's take a look at our geopotential height. This is a measurement of looking at the air masses, right? When you get lower than average heights, the, the atmosphere is more unstable. We get more shower chances. We get more dynamics going in hand. But 
If you're in the orange areas, that's above normal heights. That means warmer temperatures, higher pressure, and it means drier weather, right? And so let's go forward in time here. You can see why it's going to warm up because of this ridge that's in uh, that's going to be building in across the eastern half of the U.S. in the next two and a half or three and a half to four days. And then the pattern is going to change. Still ridging back across the eastern half of the U.S. A little bit of trophy-like weather uh, going on across the high plains in the central U.S. More ridge back west, but the pattern is going to change. Look at this. Uh, we get more colder and um, unstable weather back across the west, like California, the Pacific Northwest, maybe the northern plains, and it's because of the pattern. With more ridging returning across the the eastern half, like the eastern seaboard, the northeast, is likely to get some nice uh, weather. Much more seasonable, not as crazy like it's been, which is good. And then the trophy type weather continues throughout the next 7 to 10 days. Now, what about those temperature anomalies? Well, everybody's curious about the chances of you seeing at or above or below average. So, this is showing you on the Climate Prediction Center. Let's make this full screen so everybody with their fabulous eyeballs can see this. So, you're leaning below to likely below if you're across uh, California, Nevada, the Four Corners, even portions of the Pacific Northwest. Now, you're likely to see above average temperatures if you are, again, across um, the Great Lakes. So to put this in simple words, let me highlight this area very nicely. So you're likely to see above average chances if you are in the Great Lakes and the Northeast. And we do the same thing. By the way, that's 6 to 10 days. This is 8 to 14 days. Trending cooler than average across the West. Trending warmer than average chances of those temperatures for the Great Lakes, for the Northeast, for the Eastern Seaboard. It's been like that on average. If we look at a 90-day average period, I don't have it up here, but I guarantee it is um, showing you like temperatures between 1 to 3 degrees above normal so far. So in a 3-month average, it hasn't been all that cold across the Midwest and the Deep South and even the Eastern Seaboard. You've had this warmer, persistent weather overall. Even so, you have had these uh, punches of cold air. They haven't been persistent like they would be otherwise. Like last year, they were really persistent. Leaning below average for the West, though, in the 8 to 14 day forecast. When we take a look at our precipitation forecast, it is leaning above for the Great Lakes, for the Midwest, and for the Northeast. Leaning above for California, Nevada, and the Four Corners. Leaning below if you are in, um, say, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Montana, which which is uh, nice to see. It's nice to dry out for a little bit, but hopefully not too long, right? So you can get rid of the drought. The 8 to 14 day forecast still indicates likely above to leaning above for California, for Nevada, for the Four Corners, pretty much most, most of the nation leaning above average as far as snow, rain, sleet, however you want to put it. More active weather possibly through the middle of February and February only has 29 days actually let me get that right 28 days i get confused leap year right leap years when you get 29 days but either way um you can see there of what it's looking like through the 17th leaning above average but anyways if you could do me a huge favor folks if you did enjoy this video if you liked my presentation please consider subscribing it really means a lot to me because, yes, I haven't been as active on YouTube, but I am going to try my awesome best at being as active as I can. There's just been a lot of family going on, just been very busy around here. And when it gets busy, you just don't have as much time that you want to keep your viewers like you guys updated here as far as the weather goes. But don't worry. Just because I'm not doing YouTube doesn't mean I'm ignoring the weather. I promise you, okay? So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button. It means a lot. And share this with your family and friends on social media. And most of all, hit the bell icon to get all notifications, all updates here on the channel. And also, be sure to check out the Mesovort, um WX 
Weather website. Um, it's a great website to sign up on. It's free. It's free to become a member today. But anyways, that's going to do with this video. Thank you all for watching. Peace.